Hello everyone, I am Big Trend from IG Delft. In this video, I will introduce you to the Vapro API. I will cover what it is, how it works, and what it is used for. API stands for Application Programming Interface. By definition, API is a computing interface which defines interactions between multiple software intermediaries. For example, Vapor API defines the interactions between Vapor database server and, for example, the Vapor portal website or other software programs. The Vapor portal website itself is a graphical user interface. It allows you to control which data you want to get, which information you want to see without knowing in details how clicking a button gives you the result you want. The website developer knows how it works because he codes the button so that when it is clicked, the information will be displayed. The website developer, however, also uses some interfaces that abstract higher level details for him. It is a part of the API of a program. Both interfaces define ways for us to interact with a program, abstracting away the details of the implementation. Why the user interface is made for user of the application. The API is made for the application programmer to use or extend the program. Varpro API is a RESTful API, which means it is written using the style and constraints of REST or representative state transfer. It is an architectural style of remote API that allows program to interact with resources over the web. It helps remove the limitation of local machines such as storage or computational power. For example, you don't have to save the whole Vapo dataset on your computer to search for an available dataset for an error in a time period. You just have to send a request to the Vapor server using an interface, and then the server will send back a response with the information you need. You might use some programming library to create a request, which follows HTTP, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol. This request is stateless, meaning that the server won't remember anything about the client, in this case, your program. If you need to maintain state, such as your user authentication, you must send it with every request using headers. You can see here an example of a request with the user authentication token in the header. So what is a request requesting for? In this case, each request will be requesting information about a resource or object, which is assessed with a URI or Uniform Resource Identifier. For example, list of datasets in Vapo catalog, a list of available raster for a certain time period, or link to download raster, and so on. There are many HTTP methods available. In Vapo API, the two main methods are used, which is GET and POST. GET requests include all required data in the URL as query string parameters. For example, GET requests can request for metadata when providing the code of the dataset in the request URL. In contrast, POST requests supply additional data from the client to the server in a message body. Therefore, POST method is often used to send user private information, such as authentication token and information of point or area that user want to request time series data. Then the server responds with data. This includes HTTP headers like request ID, runtime, and status of the request. The body is typically represented as JSON or JavaScript object notation, which is structured and nested. You can use any programming language to turn JSON string into its own native object. Here is comparison of a GUI response and an API response which you can see both provide the link to download a raster. So what is Vapo API used to build? By now you already know that it has been used to build the web portal. Moreover, some mobile apps have used this to fetch Vapo data from the server. 
for example here are some screenshots from plant village mobile apps uh, in this app user can select a farm location and the app will collect real-time VAPO data to monitor growth and water stress in the farm so what do you want to build 